Hydalin, Eorcia, Thanalon, Ulda, the solitary rose amidst dust and rock. Despite her inhospitable surroundings, Ulda is a bustling commercial hub, contained within thick, protective walls, keeping her citizens safe from whatever dangers lurk outside. However, in days past, Ulda would face the ultimate test, as Dalla threatened to destroy the realm. The story of Ulda is complicated and long. Here's a quick TLDR. Her story starts in the early years of the Sixth Astral Era with the creation of the city-state of Belladiah in the year 737, a city-state that thrived and prospered for 200 years. However, in 964, the Sultan of Belladiah fell ill and his two sons, Sasagan and Sasawefu, both struggled for power, as they both claimed to be the rightful heir to the throne. The nation is thrown into war. In 969 of the Sixth Astral Era, the princess effectively tore Belladaya into two new sultanates, Sildi under Sasawefu and Ulda under Sasagan. After hundreds of years of war between the two city-states, it finally ended with the fall of Sildi in 1181, and thus current day Ulda was born. The city-state itself is circular in design, surrounded by massive walls, like a fortress. Today it's divided into two main sections, the Steps of Nald and the Steps of Thal, each acting as individual zones divided by the iconic strings of blue orbs. The steps of Nald and Thal is further divided into the Merchant Strip, with its connection to the Goblet and Husting Strip at the city-state's second level, which contains the Chamber of Rule, as well as a connection to the airship landing. Now let's turn back time to the year 1572 of the Sixth Astral Era. Ulda is enjoying an age of continued prosperity. Eorzeans from all corners of Aldenard flock to the city-state to partake of its well-known recreation, the gambling halls and fighting arenas. Let's start off by looking at 1.0 Uldar's map. Before the fall of Dalamud, the city-state's steps did not exist. Only the actual gates of Nald and Thal existed back then, which would give name to the two new zones in A Realm Reborn based on their location on the map. So Ulda was one large zone in 1.0, and the city was instead divided into the two districts, the Merchant Strip at the first floor and Hustings Strip on the second. To prevent this video from becoming too long, we're only going to focus on what we today call the Steps of Nald in this part. What better way to start off our tour than entering through the Gate of Nald? As you can see, that was not actually possible in 1.0. The Gate of Nald isn't actually open, nor is the Gate of Thal. Instead, two side gates are left open for entry, leading into long tunnels embedded in the city-state's thick walls. This particular feature was often debated during 1.0's lifetime. Of all the city-state entrances, Uldas seems the most out of place. This might all stem from a design flaw that the devs didn't catch before it was too late. It is actually very likely the main gates of Ulda were supposed to be open initially, but for whatever reason, perhaps due to engine limitations that didn't show until the city-state's design was complete, they were forced to shut the gates and add the side gates as entry points. This is further evidenced by data mining, showing that the gates actually had the option of being opened, but by doing so, the other side of the gate remained unloaded and broken. Whatever the issue actually was, it was solved in A Realm Reborn by adding zone dividers. Entering through the right loading tunnel, you'd have to endure a 15 to 20 second walk through a brown, dimly lit tunnel with nothing of interest inside. At the end, you'd find the real entrance to Uldar. 
the entrance is still visible in a realm reborn today, but the gate has been closed. If you peek inside though, you can still see the tunnel just as it appeared in 1.0. At first glance, there really isn't much of a difference in design. Ulda looks like Ulda, but once you look closer, it will become apparent that things did change between 1.0 and A Realm Reborn. First off, take note of the main street itself. It's big and, well, mostly empty. In A Realm Reborn, this was spiced up a bit more with planters and benches. This would occur all over Ulda. Where you see planters with benches in A Realm Reborn, there probably wouldn't be any in 1.0. So back to where we were. After exiting the entrance gate, you'd be facing the Ruby Road Exchange. Walking up the stairs to the exchange, you can see that there are only subtle changes between the versions. Quite a few of the original stalls were removed to open the space up more, and yet again we can see decorative planters have been placed in the middle of the road to spice things up. The eastern wall is almost completely emptied out in A Realm Reborn, compared to 1.0's stuffed line of stalls. Moving into the quicksand, there is little change to be seen. The quicksand and the hourglass remain the same in both versions. Only real difference being the location of NPCs, but some of those even remained in the same spot after the calamity. One feature that was present in this place though, was the task board. The task board was a feature present in 1.0. This board would hang in every adventurer's guild in Eorzea and would contain basic crafting and gathering quests provided by the city-state's guilds. These quests would come in two different tiers, level 1 through 9 and level 10 through 19. The items required would change daily and you could only complete one mission per guild per day. The system was abandoned immediately after launch and never saw any future additions. The task board is actually still there today, but it's no longer providing adventurers with quests and is now just a generic set decoration. Perhaps for the better. Exiting out of the quicksand's northern exit, we're back on the main road. And here's the controversial chocobo stables right in front of the gate of Nald. Controversial because these stables would exist long before chocobo mounts were added to the game in the latter half of its life. The chocobo stables remained in place in A Realm Reborn. Now if we head to the east, we finally make it to Emerald Avenue. And if we look directly north from the middle of the avenue, we'd see a familiar sight. Now, it's worth noting that Ulda is the only city-state whose Etherite Plaza remained intact and in the same place after the Calamity. In 1.0, the Etherites were modest and small, and Ulda's Etherite had a small canopy built over it. Among the Etherite Plaza guards, you'd find this guy. I'm sure he won't cause any trouble down the line. East of the Etherite Plaza, we find perhaps the biggest difference between 1.0 and A Realm Reborn's Ulda. Where you'd now expect the Immortal Flames headquarters to be, you'd find the entrance to the Market Wards in 1.0. Granted, the same entrance would be used when the Immortal Flames were introduced later in the game's life. But there was no visual or physical headquarters for Immortal Flames within the open world Ulda in 1.0. So this section of the avenue only housed generic buildings and locked doors. Interestingly, because the market wards were located this close to the Etherite, Ulda became the most popular zone in the game. This is where all the players gathered, as they didn't have to walk too far to reach the most important features of the game. The Adventurer's Guild was just down the road from the Etherite, and the market wards were right next to it, and Ulda's many vendors covered most players' basic needs. This was 1.0's Limsa Lominsa. Right across the street from the Etherite Plaza, we find the Platinum Mirage. And this one is actually quite interesting. In 1.0, this area did house, just like in A Realm Reborn, the Pugilist Guild and the actual Platinum Mirage, the game's intended minigame area. Like I mentioned in the introduction, Ulda was known for its gambling houses and the Platinum Mirage was one of them. In fact, going by the size and location of the place, it seemed to have been THE gambling house of Ulda. An elevator to the left of the counter area was most likely supposed to lead us to the gambling house itself. And yes, 
the lift is fully modeled. Not a big deal, as it's basically the same lift used in the Ruby Road Exchange, but neat nonetheless. There's even a second floor opening, but that's where the fun ends, unfortunately. The Mirage was never implemented, and no real assets exists off the inside of the Mirage. Even back in 1.0, this was being ignored, and the clerks behind the counter in the Mirage were awkwardly tiptoeing around their intended purpose. In A Realm Reborn, this is given more attention, but the clerks now inform you that only members may enter, and even leaves a tiny bit of hope of the doors one day opening, which honestly feels unlikely at this point, as the Gold Saucer now exists. This is likely a holdover from A Realm Reborn's early days when this location probably still was being considered as the game's minigame area. To the east of the Platinum Mirage, we'd find what was back then called Romolulu's Bric-a-Brac, this was renamed and restocked as Sunsilk Tapestries. This was most likely done to limit the amount of generic shops that offered the same stuff. This was a pretty normal thing in 1.0 and is probably also why some of the stalls in the Ruby Road Exchange was removed. Moving on towards what you'd expect to be the Gate of the Sultana, we find no gate. There was no way you'd be able to leave Uldah through any other gates than the Gate of Nald and Thal. After the calamity, waves of refugees flooded the gates of Nald and Thal, making passage through them difficult. Uldah's merchants and monetarists therefore funded the construction of a new gate in commemoration of Nanamo Ulnamo's reign. A little further south, you'd find a store called the Rudius. This little shop would sell Disciples of War armor and weapons, run by Sagelsword. In A Realm Reborn, you'll still find the store in exactly the same place, even the original sign is preserved. It's received a bit of a facelift with a bigger, more fancy sign at the front, but it's still recognizable as the Rudius from 1.0. Down to the flower pots, signboard, armor and shields. And yes, Sagelsword is still the shopkeep. At the end of the road, we end up at Asareth Ossuary, the temple devoted to the worship of Thal, the divine arbiter of the afterlife, a location that played a key role during the Living on a Prayer questline. Initially, I was going to give a generic overview of the horrible bloom that used to occur in this place, and yes, it does look absolutely horrendous, but then I noticed this. On the fountain outside the ossuary, there's an inscription. Who cares, I hear you say. They're still there in a realm reborn. But no, this line, Know both faces of Nald Thal, was actually changed in a realm reborn to read, Divinity is the color of gold. I'm just going to assume the change was made to make it sound less generic and more meaningful to Uldah's overall lore. This made me go back to the quicksand's northern entrance, where you'd find a similar fountain. And although it's barely visible, like for real, did they expect us to be able to read this? <laughs> there is text there, and it reads, Greatness is depth of pocket. A phrase that was carried over in A Realm Reborn, where the phrase is way more visible and readable. And what is a good city-state without a proper theme? In 1.0, the musical theme of Ulda was called The Twin Faces of Fate and sounded like this. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think about the differences between 1.0's Steps of Nald, even though it wasn't called that, and A Realm Reborn's version. 
Also, do let me know if there's anything I missed or if there's anything in the Steps of Fall area you want me to look closer at in the next part. Which, yeah, it's happening. The next part is going to be much longer because there's a lot to cover there. Anyways, thank you once again for watching and if you like what you saw, please leave a like and subscribe for more. If you want to support the channel a little extra, then please consider pledging to my Patreon campaign. Link is in the description and on screen. See you in the next one, Aorcians. Until then, may you ever walk in the light of the crystal. <laughs>